Today we're here with TRD Timmy and his $15,000 first gen build and our $70,000 third gen build. We're gonna see if old Timmy here can keep up. Yeah, you wish. Put together four tests so we can compare these trucks head to head. Let's jump into the first test right at the starting line. Nothing's gonna beat the 3.4 liter V6 in this bad boy. Four speed trans, whopping 190 horsepower. That land whale has not a shot. All right, so I'm in our 2019 TRD Pro Tacoma. It's a 3.5 liter V6, 278 horsepower, 265 foot-pounds of torque. Um, it's a little gutless, but I think we're gonna beat old John and TRD Timmy over there. Uh, we'll see how it goes. You ready to go down? Sounds healthy. That sounds healthy, that's right. All right. <laughs> It's game on, race on. I'm at the starting line against TRD Timmy here. We'll see what this Tacoma does, I don't know. Let's go, baby. I mean, you better win. This truck's 20 years newer than mine. Okay, we got some good data on that run, you guys. So I've got my race box going. Zero to 30 miles an hour was 4.06 seconds. Zero to 60, this number is gonna blow you away. Zero to 60 was 11.96 seconds. Man, this thing is slow. But I beat TRD Timmy. Now it's time to do a comfort test, and what better way to test this than to switch trucks as we make our way to the mountains. Okay, I'm in the first gen Tacoma. Um, this thing's pretty cool. It's been a while since I've been in one of these. It definitely feels a little more compact on the inside. Um, I think the back seat even looks a little smaller. So now that I'm in the third gen, uh, first thing I notice, it just feels way bigger compared to mine. Like the bulkier, the hood's way bigger it sticks up taller uh, one of the first things I noticed when I got in is that it has a jellyfish launcher down here it has this really cool infotainment like infotainment center aftermarket nice big screen overall drivability though I mean it's it's a Toyota it's drives great shifts great motor sounds great I mean this thing has almost 200,000 miles on it compared to just over 19,000 that our third gen has um, so there's a big difference in miles. Uh, I would hope that our truck would be as durable as this truck. I think these, these first gens have proven their durability and that's a huge selling point. That's probably why they're so stinking expensive still. I do notice right here on the screen, it gets 9.8 miles per gallon. That's awful, even compared to mine. I think mine at least gets 13. So that is a major downside with this being geared and everything. 
that's pretty bad gas mileage. But uh, the biggest difference comfort wise, this truck is just a little more analog. You feel everything in the steering wheel a little more, in the foot pedal, you know, your, your gas pedal and your brake. You feel a little more connected, you know, it's kind of like a, an old Porsche or an old sports car. You're just you're more in tune with the vehicle. You don't have so much electronic stuff going on. $70,000 truck, and you still have to air down every tire one by one, huh? <laughs> That's true. Where's your four-way system and all that? Oh, I know. I gotta, amp I gotta step up my game, don't I? Yeah, you do. Compressor on board, though. Yeah, me you too. You have one of those? Yeah, I do. Oh, shoot. But I gotta plug mine on the battery terminals. Oh, <laughs> mine's hard mounted. Yeah. Okay, we're at the trailhead now. It's time to go see what these trucks are capable of. But we thought we'd talk a little bit about the build out. So our truck, the CBI truck, we spent about 30 grand building this thing out. That's of course, a lot. It's, it's a ton when you think about it. As you look at it, we've got, of course, CBI armor front to rear. We've got the Prince racks on the roof. Um, lots of really great components, winch on the front. We've a couple things that we've done that I think are a little different maybe compared to the average build is we have um, lockers front and rear. So oh, wow. factory in the rear, aftermarket ARB locker up front. We've re-geared the truck, so 529 gears. And we have uh, basically the best setup from Icon that you can get. Um, it's got all their CDC valving, secondary shocks up front, hydraulic bump stops in the back. Um, so we spent a lot on the suspension. Um, Lots of great lights, you know, this thing lights up like a Christmas tree and I don't know, it's kind of overboard, but they look cool. Yeah, so that's kind of fun. Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's really built out with mostly everything that you need. Compressor on board, which is super nice. Didn't get my, uh, my end deflate though. Nope. He was hassling <laughs> me about that, but, but let's talk about how that compares to your truck. Okay. So 30 grand in a build out here. Let's go over to your truck. And so, tell us about TRD Timmy here. I'm probably about 15,000. Okay. Um, I mean, front, rear bumpers from CBI. I don't have any skid plates. I do have some rock sliders. Um, I'm on 33 inch tires. Um, Princey rack up top, so that's similar. Yeah. Um, but I'm just on a basic Bilstein 6112 lift. Yeah. It gives me like the three inches of lift and basic so, everything in the back. So lift wise, these trucks are about the same. You're on 33s, this truck's on 35s. Mm -hmm. That may make a little difference out on the trail. Lockers maybe, because yep. you don't have, no you have the locker. rear locker though? I do have the factory, factory rear. rear locker. Okay. So these trucks are really pretty similar. Yep. So who's going to, who's going to dominate on the trail out here? I think I am. You At think? least I know I'm going home with the best bang for my buck because I didn't spend all the extra on all of the fancy lighting. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go overboard with the lighting, right? Yeah. Well, let's go out and see what these trucks are capable of. Uh, we're going to head down the trail and uh, John's going to show us what's up. Okay. So right now we're actually on Franklin Basin Road. We just got off the Canyon Highway take this road for a few miles from the Utah side over to the Idaho side where we'll begin the actual trailhead to Gibson Lakes. And it did just snow this last weekend, so there's a little bit of snow on the ground where we're at now. Um, and as we get higher, I anticipate there's going to be more snow. So it's going to be really fun and really slick and see how these trucks compare. All right, so we've made our way up the canyon. Mm -hmm. We've made it to the infamous flex spot, and we're gonna see how it goes. There's, uh, as you can see, there's four, five, six inches of snow on the ground. It gets pretty flexy, right? Yeah, it's gonna be slick. And it's gonna be slick. So uh, we're gonna let TRD Timmy go first. That way I can pull him out if he doesn't quite <laughs> make it, you know. Yep. May so happen. We'll, we'll do one run without lockers, yep. and then we'll do it again with lockers, and maybe we can see kind of the difference. See what the makes. difference is. Yep. Let's do it. Okay. Oh, he's spinning. Ooh. 
Yep. Driver side rear and passenger front are spinning. Okay, I'm going to turn the locker on and we'll see if it makes any difference. Just pull that ride out. Rear locker for the win, baby. Okay, we'll see how we fare. TRD Timmy got hung up a little. Let's see if we can just creep on through here. So we made it through the flex section. The first time I went through, I didn't have enough momentum and I did spin a tire. Um, and once I engaged the rear locker, it pulled it right out, no problem at all. The first time the third gen went through, he did have more momentum than I did. He was able to make it through without any lockers. He also has the 35 inch tires. And so that will make a big difference on how much tire actually stays on the ground. Um, the second time that we went through, I was able to get through with enough momentum, didn't need the locker. Um, both of us lifted a tire in the front. Um, both of our rear tires stayed planted. So I'd say they're pretty close um, on the amount of flex and suspension travel that they have. So we've arrived here at the lake. Uh, it's not much of a lake right now, just a big field of snow. Um, most of the water is gone, but we're about here. All right, so we made it through the day. We're at camp, we made it to the lake. Nice and snowy and cold. We had a blast today. It was fun comparing these two trucks and we compared them in four different areas and, and they both did awesome. Yeah. You know, I think, what are, what are your thoughts? What I you think? think it doesn't really matter as long as you are building the truck that you want and you're getting out there and enjoying the wilderness. And that's it's like one thing that people ask me all the time is like what the, like first mod they should do. And I think it's important to just take an inventory on what you want to use your truck for yeah. and then build it for what you want to do. That's a really good point. You know, each truck, we have three trucks here, you know, and they're they're each kind of unique and, yeah. and individual to each person. And uh, all three of them got here. They all no got problems. here just fine. And we're all here. We all had a blast. Yeah. Now we're going to freeze our butts off. I don't know what it is, but. Here at CBI, we kind of have this running joke. We always choose the worst days to do content with the worst <laughs> weather. And we could have had 70 degree weather last we week, have. but it didn't work out. So instead we're enjoying the snow, having a blast and uh, great comparison between the third gen and the first gen. Yeah. So stay tuned, be sure to like and subscribe and follow us along on our next adventure.